Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today I've got a special guest tire on the channel. I've got Matt O'Neill from Savage Fly's YouTube channel. He's going to be tying up a Smoky Mountain Stimulator. This is kind of a pattern that is indicative of a lot of the fly patterns that he ties on his own channel. So on his channel, Matt ties dry flies, he ties uh, traditional winged wet flies, nymphs, and soft hackles for the most part. He's got a bit of a focus on traditional methods and lots of natural materials, lots of feather, uh, natural furs. On his channel he also has uh, reviews of books. He's got actually quite a few and he does uh, occasional giveaways on there so if you're looking to pick up a few new books or a new book uh, you might want to try your luck over at his channel. So Matt's channel is named Savage Flies, and that's named after one of his home waters on the Savage River in Maryland. So I'll let Matt introduce the pattern and take it from here. Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by. Now this next pattern is number 41 in our Great Smoky Mountain series. This is called the Smoky Mountain Stimulator. Now the Stimulator fly is not very old. Most people attribute it to Randall Kaufman from the 1980s, but some folks say it was created before that with Jim Slattery's fluttering stonefly. And some people think this is just a variation of Pat Barnes's sofa pillow. That's a really cool pattern. I want to be tying a video of that one sometime pretty soon. But whatever the history of this fly is, it's been very popular because it works. It's generally considered an attractor pattern, meaning it doesn't look exactly like anything, but it looks enough like something that's alive and tasty that the fish really love it. And I generally fish this pattern in terrestrial season, just as a big hopper, you know, tied a little bit smaller and it's a general attractor pattern. But it's a really cool pattern, not too difficult to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. There it is in the vise, Smoky Mountain Stimulator. Now I'm going to be tying this on a size eight, and this is a it's a curve shank. It's a hopper terrestrial hook. You can tie it on a straight hook, but I I typically fish these as you know during terrestrial season as a hopper. So I like the curve shank hooks in slightly bigger sizes. So I'm going to use black 70 denier and just lay a base all the way down to the the back of the hook. Okay, now when you got your thread base in, we're gonna take some deer hair, just deer body hair for the tail. Now, here is a tip. Hunting in Missouri sent this one to me just today, actually. Mentioned uh, to run a dryer sheet through your hair stacker. If you have any problems with them sticking or a little bit of static, just run you know, one of the, the dryer anti-static sheets through there before you stack it, and it really makes a huge difference. So thanks for that amazing tip. My tips lined up very well there. Now one other tip I should mention is when cutting your deer hair, take a little bit more than you think, maybe at least a third, because I'm grabbing it by the tips now and I'm gonna pull some, any of these short fibers out. So I probably just thinned it by a third right there. And that's my tail. And I'm gonna tie this in maybe, oh, a hook gap long. So let's try it right there and see how that's gonna look. Do a pinch wrap right there. Now these wraps are not terribly tight because this is still deer hair and it's still a little bit hollow. It would probably flare up on me if I put them too tight. So that's, that's the tail I want. And I'm gonna now, I can put a couple of tight wraps forward. And if this flares up, that's fine because we're going to trim that. Okay, so the tail looks pretty good. It's not flaring up. I will reach in here and then pull this up at a 30 or 45 degree angle, put my scissors parallel to the hook, and then just cut it right there. So that might help you make a little bit of a taper. I'm going to put some loose wraps right here to just try to bind all this down. Okay, and now I can take it back with some tighter wraps. Okay, the next component is going to be our palmered rib. Now I'm using a ginger, but one of the great things about this fly is you can tie it with so many different color combinations, it's, it's, and it's still a stimulator. So if you err to the side of anything when you're sizing this, make them just a little bit shorter, 
Um, it's fine if the palmered hackle is the same length as, you know, the, the front hackle, but you don't want it to be any bigger. So I'm just going to trim off some bare stem right there, get my tie-in point, and I'll put the concave side toward the hook. I'll just catch this in with a couple of turns. I'm going to leave a little bit of bare stem showing right there. Just pull that back. And, and I'm not taking it all the way back to the tail because my first dubbing wrap is going to actually be behind this feather. So, okay, got that buried in. Take my thread back almost to the, to the stem of that feather. And I'm going to put some wax on it. Now, the Smoky Mountain pattern calls for an orange body. So I'm going to stick with orange. But again, you could make this anything you want. You could make a green body, you could make it brown. Um, but to match the picture in Don Kirk's book, I'm gonna dub with some orange rabbit. Now, it's a pretty long body. We're gonna dub it up to about the two thirds point because we've got a pretty good sized thorax too. So it might take a couple of applications of dubbing. And I got about a, a two inch noodle right there. What I'll do, you see I've left a little bit of, of thread without dubbing on it and I will use that to get me back. And now my first real wrap is right behind that stem. So let's take this up and don't worry about a taper. Just try to lay an even base. And I'm gonna go just a tad bit farther up than that. Okay, that's kind of just a judgment call how long you want the body. Remember, we're going to have a different colored thorax dubbing up there and then some more hackle up front. So next step, just go ahead and palmer this ginger hackle. Uh, fairly open wraps and on this size 10, you know, I might get five or six wraps right here. Okay, when you get it up front, two thread wraps to catch this hackle off. We'll go ahead and trim this one. Now for the wing. Same deer hair as we use for the tail. Take a, a good bit bigger of a clump here. Again, probably maybe one and a half times what you think you're gonna need because when we thin it out, we'll, we'll thin it by, you know, maybe 50% or so. So I've got a big stack about like that that I'm gonna put in my stacker. Okay, now, just as we did with the tail, pull it out gently. You got your tips lined up pretty well right here. I'm just gonna grab them by the tips. Now I will thin this out by pulling right here and it's gonna pull a lot of the short hairs out. So I might have to do that a couple of times. Okay. I think that is going to be thick enough. So swap your hands and then, whoops, I dropped a couple fibers right there. Measure your length. We want our length to be pretty much to the back of that tail. So that is about what I want right there. I'm gonna put it back in my material hand. Now here's a trick that can really help you. So pull some extra thread out and then put one wrap just around the fur, and it's, or the, the, you know, the hair, and then still holding it pretty tight in my material hand, and I pulled down, uh, this should help hold it on top of the hook. Now, it's gonna flare out on you. I'll show you how we take care of that. So, let's see. That is, for the most part, still on top of the hook, but we don't want it to be flared up that much. So just grab the tips. Don't worry about the front yet. Just grab the, the wing and we're gonna put a few medium wraps right here. Just kind of roll them back. Okay, so now our wing is laying back. I've got one crazy right there that I'm actually pushing back. I don't want. So let's try to get that right there. Okay. So we've got a few medium wraps right there to just hold that 
wing down. Now I can take my thread back up here and I can put some really tight wraps. So it's gonna, it's gonna flare on you, but it's not a big muddler minnow, so we're gonna trim all this stuff off. And hopefully that back wing is still laying fairly low. Okay, I think it is, and we're in good shape right there. So next step, just reach in here and trim all this. Uh, this might, it might take you a, a little bit to trim this, but you know, get it as close as you can. Okay, that might take you a few seconds, but the, the smaller you can get it, the easier it will be to wrap this thorax. So just put some wraps down through here, and I'm gonna to try to smooth this out, just build a little bit of a taper right here. Not real important, but might help it be a little bit neater there. Okay, got a few scragglies floating through there. Now, we're gonna tie in our front hackle. And the front hackle on this is just a grizzly. A grizzly dry fly hackle. Kind of measure how long you want it. I think that right there is gonna work. That's gonna be just a little bit longer than that back hackle. So I'll strip off a little bare stem right here, and then that's where I'm gonna tie it in. And like we did in the back, concave side toward the hook, but this time I'm not going to put the first wrap of uh, dubbing behind it. So you can just catch this in all the way right there. And then, let's see, I got a couple of scraggly fibers right there, but hang your, your thread where we're going to start the dubbing. So about right there looks good to me. More wax on it. And the dubbing for the front, the thorax, is just something that's gonna contrast with that orange. You could use yellow, um, olive. I'm gonna use an olive. The picture in the book has olive. So we'll go with this. And obviously it's not gonna take as much as it took on the back, but it will take a fair amount because it's a pretty thickly dubbed thorax. So I've got a couple of inches right there. We'll see if that will, will get us all the way up there. Okay, I think, um, you know what? We can go just a little bit more. Okay, I think I'm gonna like that a little bit better. Now, we just basically palmer this grizzly right back from where we tied it in. That first wrap can be right there between the, the thorax and the wing. And then, you know, four or five wraps is probably gonna be fine. Maybe, maybe even three wraps. I think that's three right there. You know, let's get crazy. Let's, let's go one more. So that's four right there. Two thread wraps right here should catch this off. Now let's snip this excess grizzly hackle. And we can work on our head. So what I like to do, I just kind of pull these back. And if I've got any going forward, I try to capture them in or snip them. You now it's a dry fly, but you don't have to be all that economical with your thread wraps because it's so bushy. I mean, there's so much hackle on this thing, it's gonna float all day. You now one right there, let's get rid of that. And I think we're good with this, this head right here. Just a couple more wraps to clean it up and we'll put a whip finish on here and then see if we have any more cleanup to do. I'm only gonna do three, four turns because I definitely fished these with some head cement. So, do we have any cleanup? Nah, no, I think we're fine with this. It's a big bushy fly, great terrestrial pattern, uh, summertime, or just a general attractor pattern. So that's it, my friends. I really appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again for stopping by and checking out Matt tying up the Smoky Mountain Stimulator. You can check out Matt's videos on his channel, Savage Flies, on YouTube. I invite you to click the link down below and check out his library of fly patterns. Before you go, please take a minute to leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep hooking your vice. Cheers.